Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing with another video. Ignore the sounds in the background, my son's uh, refacing some valves. But anyway, today's video is kind of a follow up on the last video. Now the last video that I had, I said that um, it was, does smoothing up an ASCAS finish improve flow? And all I did was do a 60 grit on an ASCAS port and float it before and after and, and to see the change. And the change was actually rather dramatic, more than I had thought. Um, so then it left the question of, well, is it, is that normal or is it just something like that? And I know several of you are thinking, well, you're a head porter, you should know this. No, because usually with that stuff, I always consider fluff and buff stuff. And I thought people that did it really just wasted their time or sold some people some heads that they just took about an hour and charged them a thousand bucks or not an hour, but eight hours and charged them a thousand bucks. And I thought it was just a waste of time. Well, it did gain some flow but it left me with more questions. So we have this head. Now the last one that I was using in the video was a Brodix Dragon Slayer and, and it had a CNC chamber and it was CNC bulb blend and it was CNC gasket match too. This one is a different head. Now this is a Profiler, which is upside down, 210 small block Chevy head. And it's not entirely from the factory. And I wonder, here's what I mean. Uh, I have already done the valve job on this. So initially from the factory, you can get these with a, I think you can get them with a 202 or a 2055 and a 208 intake valve. And I might be wrong on that. But I ordered them with 2055 and I cut the valve job to a 208 and I did my own valve job on the exhaust. When you get a profiler head on the exhaust, they, they don't have a radius valve job on the exhaust. I, they do now because I put it on there. This is still 45 degree C. So it's 45 degree, 45 on exhaust as well. I do plan to port these and I got one head done. And this one I'm just gonna use for this test. Now, Profiler, this used to be the best bang for the buck head period was the Profiler one. Because they flowed relatively close to what an AFR head flowed. And an AFR head's fully CNC ported. And they were like 600 bucks cheaper. Well, that's out the window. Um, this head now, if you look at the cost wise, this head, which is a 210 cc's versus the Brodix Dragon Slayer, which would have a CNC chamber, CNC bulb blend, CNC gasket matched. This one right here is within 50 bucks and depends on who you buy them from. And then if you compare, well, how's that compared to an AFR? Remember it used to be 600 bucks away. It's somewhere in the neighborhood of two to $300, depending on where you get it from. So it's, they raised their price to make it uh, I'm sure that I understood the point to it was, hey, let's raise the price of these. I got a high demand, let's raise the price. Well, what they did is they priced themselves right out of the market. Now, they're not the only head they ever done this. Dart SHPs, when they first came out, I used to sell those like hotcakes. And then sure enough, Dart's like, I'm buying so many, let's raise the price. And when they did that, which is similar to what Profiler has done now, is when you raise the price, it, you might like, well, they're either gonna buy it or they're not. Well, what it does is, because there's so many other heads on the market, it eliminated that as a budget alternative and for the next price up, people could get a different head that was better and that's what they did. So I didn't sell near as many SHPs after that, almost zero. Profiler is almost in the same situation with this. Um, if you look at the cost on this head now, because they're so close to the Dragon Slayer, it's like, I get 100 bucks more and I get CNC Chamber and it's, you know, CNC gasket match, flows more, why wouldn't I? Um, or 300 bucks more and I get a full CNC head that um, flows more, makes more power. Why wouldn't I? $300 more is a, not so much of a jump as 600 was. So anyway, that's a little rant on that. I'm kind of, I understand the reason for it. It just, I probably won't sell anymore now. They're out of the budget for most people's range. They would just all do something else. So, but anyway, let's just get to the test because that's really what you're here for anyway. When they come from Profiler, they don't do a CNC bulb blend. They actually, as you can tell here, they do it by hand. And that's why it's fairly inconsistent. And what I mean by this is, it, as cast, heads will shift when they're being poured and stuff. But whoever does the bulb blend might not be the same person that does it on the next set of heads and so on and so forth. So some person might be really good at doing them and some person not so good. So the flow number differences between head to head can be much greater because of that. Um, so I have flowed many of these because I used to sell quite a few. And typically they flow in the neighborhood of the lowest ones I've seen flowed 269 
and the best one flowed 300, but most of them fall right in the 270 range. That's just how they are. Um, still pretty good for 210 cc's, pretty good. Exhaust flows about 220, uh, not bad at all. So anyway, because I cut it out to a larger 208 intake valve, I've already flowed it, and it flows a little bit more than it would out of the box, but not by much. So what we're gonna do, just like the last video, I'm gonna use a cross-cut burr and kind of smooth all this out, and then a 60 grit and flow it, both intake and exhaust, and then the chamber. And um, we'll see what difference it made. So the reason for doing this one is because if you look at the finish of this head versus that Dragon Slayer, there are far more boogers in the port than there was with the Dragon Slayer. Also with this bowl blend, it's not near as consistent or as smooth as what the Dragon Slayer was. So we'll see if this makes a difference at all. Now the chamber itself really doesn't look all that bad. Now I've got my own valve job in here, so if you see a ridge, it might not have been there from Profiler. But I'm gonna flow both, so I'm gonna 60 grit both these first, blow it, then I'm gonna do the chamber. Then, I've already got this head done. This is its mate. Its mate's all ported fully, so it's actually been opened up to a larger side, but I haven't done the chambers yet. So I just got done flowing it, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the chamber and flow it because I wanna see if a higher flowing head makes a bigger difference if you do the chambers than a lower flowing head. And we're gonna find that out here in this video. So, let me get to doing some grinding and stuff and we'll get to it. If you want more information about the head, this head's off for an angle plug or straight plug. This one happens to be an angle plug. This is a 64cc chamber. They also offer them in the 72cc. Most people get 64. Um, they do have a deep port exhaust, which is um, fairly common. Good exhaust flow always has been with them. And this is the other downside that I'm not a fan of. And here you can see more of the boogers on the port. You can tell I flowed this one. You can see it's got, you know, some sand casting. And see how it looks like they ground from the factory right there? They probably did, and then they put it in a, in a um, media blaster to kind of hide it a little bit better. But definitely more slag in the port than there was with the Brodix. But what I don't like is how thin the divider is. I do not like that. So I haven't even done any porting yet, but see how thin that is? So when I port them, all I'm doing is making the line straight. So I see how it's thin here and it curves this way? When I port it, I just make it straight up. I don't try making it narrower at all because it's already pretty thin to hold that little gasket there. The rocker bar pad is always nice and that's good. In the past, I used to have to hone all the guides and redo the valve job on every profiler head I ever sold. Now, here lately, they've been much better, so there's something there. Anyway, I need to get to work so I can uh, do this one 60 grit and get to sharing some results with you. I thought before I showed you the results, I'd actually talk about more of what I actually did to the heads. So you can be like, well, this is what improved it or not. And I'll go through some of this. Okay, let me get my light going here. This is my dead flashlight. There we go. This is the port that's been ported. Well, I shouldn't say ported. This is the 60 grit one. This is actually the fully ported head. So if you look at it all, it's been ported. It's a much larger size um, than the ASCAST one. Now this one is simply just ASCAST, and all I did is um, put a 60 grit finish on the intake and exhaust, and then I flowed it with the chambers just like this. Okay, so that's how I did it first. So in other words, actually I flowed it stock, and then I did a burr finish, or sorry, 60 grit finish on both these, then flowed it with the chamber like this, and then I did the chamber and I'm gonna reflow it. Now on this head, I had already fully ported it because I it's kind of an afterthought with the head with the video. I fully ported it so it's actually larger in size than this one. So this one's the size should be pretty close to what it was in stock. But there's some differences and I'm gonna show you in just a minute. But anyway, this one was actually I made larger because this is what's gonna end up happening in this head. So this one size-wise got bigger, both on intake and exhaust. In all fairness though, I didn't make the exhaust much larger than the one it was here because it didn't need to be. The intake didn't need to be bigger. So this one's actually sized bigger. And then I flowed it with the chamber uh, like this, and then I redid the chamber, and I'm gonna flow it again. So I should, the reason for that is I'm really trying to see if 
a head that flows more if having the chamber done makes more of a difference than a head that flows less. That's kind of the idea. Now, I told you I'd get back to what's actually a little bit different. This head obviously was made bigger, so it's definitely bigger everywhere. This one, not so much, but there's a catch. Because after watching my last video and having some of the comments said, a lot of you thought that if I just 60 grit the whole entire surface on whatever head you have, that you will gain flow. There's not necessarily the case on that. And let me explain. What you see here is this is the ASCAST one. Let's see if this flashlight works. Oh boy, it does. This is the ASCAST, uh, and you can see that there's a not a very great transition between where they bowl blended and into the port. So even though I have smoothed all this up with the 60 grit, probably the most change from flow actually came from smoothing just where they bowl blended and made the transition much better. So instead of leaving it kind of rough like it is here and around, especially on the short side and especially on the exhaust, which I don't know if you can see because of the camera lighting, but probably smoothing that up has made more of a difference than just the surface finish. Because a lot of you thought, well, just changing the surface finish, that was the magic key. That's what it is. Most likely, it's from smoothing up just the bowl blend and wherever the transitions are. So if you went back and watched the one with the Dragon Slayer, even though that CNC transition was pretty good, it wasn't near as bad as this, that's probably why it gained flow. Not so much that you got rid of the boogers. If there was a perfectly as cast finish that didn't have the bowl blend, that'd be one to test, which brings me to my next thought. Hopefully by Wednesday, I will have had the LS head, which doesn't have this bowl blend like they do on these profilers. And LS3 is pretty close to as cast the whole way. I'll try to do the same thing done here to see if it makes a difference with the last test on this kind of thing. But anyway, I want to talk about that first because I just don't want you thinking, hey, if I just 60 grit whatever head it is, it's going to gain. Because take, for instance, go back and watch my Pro Max 200cc video. You'll see that that head's actually pretty smooth. It doesn't really have a bowl blend at all. So if you did a 60 grit on that, I don't know that you're gaining anything. Um, but maybe we'll do further testing later on. This one obviously had more. So um, we'll get to see if it actually flowed more. Plus, we'll deal with the chambers. Now, one question people will ask is, did you gasket match? Well, on the last head, the Dragon Slayers, they're already CNC gasket matched. On this one, all I tried doing on the intake, which I didn't do a very good job because I'm going to come back and pour it anyway, is trying to make this line come straight up. So you can tell this is this is how the dividers come. They're pretty thin and they taper out at the top. Um, I mean, top like this area. I was trying to do the same thing here, but you know, time got the better of me. So I was like, screw it. Because honestly, when I go porting it, I got to raise this up. This part here needs to go a bit higher to match a 1206. And I was like, no, I still have to fully grind it like I did that one. So I'll, I will wait just to do it. So this is probably not on the entry what you do because this is pretty much stock besides just 60 grit. This is, you probably are not going to do that. I wouldn't blame you to do that. Um, but this isn't probably what you would have done. Most people would just do a gasket match like it should be. This I was kind of like, ah, if I do it this and I come back, I'm going to mess myself up. So this one though, because it's done, you can see it's a straight line all the way up. So anyway, the dicum's still on there, but I just got to clean it still. Anyway, uh, that's for that. The last question is people ask is what did you use to do it? So let me go through some of those real quick. The first thing I use, this is a cross cut burr, which this is a half inch diameter. And this is an oval. If you just try to use, say, your cartridge roll to do all this, um, you're investing a whole lot of time because it would take you forever. And you'll go through a lot of cartridge rolls. So I recommend you start with a cross cut because it's going to get rid of this. The thing is how you use it. If you just let it sit in one spot, it's going to dig in. Um, by the way, you can get an aluminum cut. That's where they don't have these cross cuts in here. The cross cuts just don't take off as much material. So if you're actually doing heavy grinding, I actually don't use the cross cuts to have the finishing phase on this. I use aluminum burr and because it removes way more material faster. Do I recommend you do it on that? If you know what you're doing, you can. If not, it's going to look like that. Because they probably use aluminum burr and that's why it looks like that. And it's also takes more faster, which means you can mess up quicker. Cross cut takes off less material, clogs quicker though. Um, but 
you for this test it's perfect because i'm not really removing material i'm just smoothing so it works perfect so if you want to do it you can use this um if you're trying to really port ahead probably don't really want to use this you want to use you can use our finishing touch you wouldn't use it for the actual grinding the next thing i use is this now this is a pink stone i think it's like 60 grit but i'm not entirely sure or it's not 60 grit but like 20 grit or something i'm not entirely sure um i got these from stone or head abrasives and they are they are not cheap but this is what i use so after the cross cut then i come in with this the reason why same thing if i came back after the cross cut and tried using this i would take forever so just to save a little bit of time i use these then i use the cartridge rolls which brings me to which ones so i've got all three actually here this one's actually the standard one that most people have this one's from goodson uh this is what they are the next one that a lot of people use is this orange one I don't know where this one's from 3M and I'm not sure the exact name, but my favorite, and I mentioned in the previous video, is these blue ones. They're like some ceramic thing. These last longer and do a great job, especially on the finish. Now, you will need this thing. See this black thing? This is called a mandrel. And what happens is, and I can't do both hands at the same time, so we'll try. Nope, can't do it. Um, these unscrew. Well, I can. So, maybe. There we go. They pop off like this. This is a mandrel. Now they come in different lengths. So I want, I think this is like a six inch or something. But I use an eight inch one when I'm actually doing the head. So you'll need this if you're actually wanting to grind. And then you just pop these on. It's pretty simple. Anyway, uh, let's get to results and see those done. Another thing I forgot to mention, um, and I'll show you. By the way, I got one just because I wanted to show you. This is an aluminum cut burr. You can tell how different it is. This one won't really do some work, really takes the material out. And this is what I use to actually pour it. You can tell the difference between that and this cross cut. The reason why it's cross cut, you can tell because there's a cut across it if the camera captures it right compared to that one. So there's that. But I did want to point this out because I totally forgot. These are half inch diameter cartridge rolls. They're great for doing the ports, but on the chambers, you could use it on this side, but really it's hard to do on that side. So on that, I actually use a 3 8 diameter one that's why this is here so it's perfect for doing this now you might say well how do you not hit the seats that's this what you need to do is go to the machine shop or if you got some junk valves take them to the machine shop and have them um, reface until there's very little margin left the margins the part here it makes it very sharp on the ends when you do that and then what you do with it is you will shove it in And you get one for the intake as well. As you can tell, this one's been used quite a bit. And you just shove it in. And what that does is it protects the seat so you can go grinding without it touching the seat. So that's how you do it. You probably can, if you don't have any of these, you can probably go to your local machine shop. They've probably got junk valves. You need ones that are the same diameter or larger diameter than what you have here for your valve job. So in other words, this is a 208, but the valve is a 210. So it protects the seat. You can use a 208 as well. And then this is just a 1.6. So you need, to, you need to have the size or bigger just so it fits in there and protect it. But you can probably go to your machine shop and ask if they have any junk valves and if they're willing to reface them so it has no margin or very little margin uh, for you. And you probably get away with them relatively cheap. Almost all machine shops have junk valves and I've got a ton. So anyway, uh, there's that. Let's get to flow number results. Okay, here are the results. Now this is the, some people like seeing this, so I'm gonna show both ways. I'm gonna show the raw numbers so you can actually see exactly how many CFM it is. But some people like to see overlays like this. So let me explain. Let me get my cursor over here. So what you see here, well my cursor is going crazy. There we go. These lines right here, this is the exhaust flow, that uh, this spread here. This right here is the intake flow, okay? So if you look at this bottom line here, so we're gonna start with the exhaust just because it's lower. Uh, this line right here is stock, so that's that line. This line right here for the intake is stock. Then you're like, well, what are these other lines? Well, this one right here, interestingly enough, is with the 60 grit. So you could tell they're really, really close at the lower lifts because they're by lifts. So about 400 is really where they start getting off. Below that, they're not that far different. But at 400, you could tell they start getting off. Well, this line right here where it dips down, that's the bowl blend, but no chamber. This one right above it, that's the chamber. Now, if you notice this line right here, these ones are up here. This is the ported head. So you can see, wow, it gains a lot, but it really doesn't get better to it till after five. And then you can see that little spot right there, that's with the ported chamber. 
The exhausts, we'll get to that. They're about the same. So you can see, except for I will say, see this one that's higher through here? That's the not ported head, but ported 60 grit chamber. Anyway, let's get to the raw numbers so it'll be easier to see. Okay. Just about to get off the thing. This right here, this this column right here, cylinder one, is stock. So it's exactly, and, I, and by the way, I shouldn't say exactly how it comes from profiler because it's not. What I mean by stock is this head with my valve job, no port work done. So this is a two-way intake valve, one 600 exhaust valve. I did use Ferreira valves. They are the exact ones from the other video with the Brodix. They've got a 33 degree back cut, no back cut on the exhaust. And this is how they came with me just doing the valve job. This is that same head, exact head, didn't change head, this same head using a 60 grit finish after doing what I already described. As you could tell, it picked up quite a bit. Um, almost three CF, I mean, really all the low lift stuff, that's what I mean. The low lift really doesn't change much, but once you start getting the higher lifts, they do. So you look like that gain, gain, I mean, Good gains, very good gains, even on the exhaust. And you can tell the exhaust is moving a lot of air. This is without an exhaust pipe, 235 CFM peak, um, 184 at 400 is really good numbers. This, but by the way, this one is without the chamber being done. This is how much change is just doing the chamber. So this does help the low lift flows typically. Didn't do much at one or two, it gained three there. Nothing there, but at four, seven CFM, good gain. And you can see how it keeps gaining and does pretty good. The same trend kind of falls for the exhaust. Now, the reason for I wanted to test this was, well, obviously the ported head is going to flow more. Well, does the ported chamber make a bigger difference when a head that already flows more? But I do want to start off with this. This, these three were from a different head than these two. Because this video is like an afterthought after the previous video. So this is a different head and I never had its stock number. So I don't have that number for this head. So for all I know, it could be higher or lower. So, but anyway, this is the ported numbers, really good. The only thing that hasn't been done on this one right here is no chamber work. If you tell it's 241 at four, 302 at six, which is good, and peak at 315. Um, this, all I did was the chamber. And you can tell 247, Good number there, 307 at six, and it's peaking about 316. Exhaust also picked up, but not as much as you think. Now some of you, and I can already tell you because I can see the comments now, it's my psychic ability. Some of you are gonna be looking at this column versus this column, and the thing you're gonna say is, wait a minute. The stock head, just doing the 60 grit and smoothing that up, flows the same as your ported head till 600 pretty much. You're correct, because look, 283 to 283, same. 247 to a 247, same there, and about the same there. So this head, you, you're charging a whole lot of money, but you only see flow gains from 600 up. <laughs> I don't have but a 550 lift cam. I don't need to do that. I And a lot of people ask, why do you flow up to one inch of valve lift? Here, let me explain. I, I really want you guys to understand this because I guarantee there's somebody already getting ready to put a comment until they listen to this or they haven't made it to this end of the video and they, didn't, and they haven't heard this. True, they are the same, pretty close to 500 lift. At 600 above, my ported head would be better. So, the, and some of you are thinking, I don't run a 600 or 650 lift cam. My cam is 550 or, you know, um, that passes through this point twice. This must be better. Well, the reason why I flow ahead to one inch of valve lift is because it tells me how stable the port is. And what I mean by that is typically when a port drops off like this one does. So for instance, it went 295 and then at 296, 296, and then it drops to 295. And this one dropped down all the way to 289 and then comes back. This one kind of stays the same. The reason why you flow to one inch is it's telling me is the port going to keep climbing in airflow, which is what we want to see. Now, is someone going to run a one inch cam with this? Probably not. But what I want to see is the airflow at least maintain or keep climbing as the lift points increase. And I'm like, so what? What's that mean? Well, remember this flow bench only flows, and I could turn it up, but this flow numbers were generated at 28 inches of, va of vacuum of water. 
a live engine is going to pull way more air through the port, especially if it's boosted, there's more density and things as well. So a live engine is going to see far more air going through that port than this flow bench is showing right now. So if a port is unstable at say one inch valve lift here, it's not, it's not because of other things. It's because the port's not stable. Um, this port shape doesn't have enough size, the short side's not shaped right, for whatever reason. Something's causing it to not be stable. Now, if it's doing it at one inch valve lift at 28 inches of vacuum, and you're running a 550 lift cam, and you're like, well, it's, I only run 550, I ain't gonna worry about it, it's not backing up there. That airspeed that caused that to happen on my flow bench will, on a live engine, happen at a much earlier time. So this airspeed, even though you got a 550 lift cam, you're turning 6,000 RPM, will go past where this airspeed caused that to happen on a live engine. That's why I flow it to one inch. And that's why I want to see it keep climbing. Now, if I had a dyno, and God, I wish I did, a good test would be that one versus that one. I would put two cams in, one with a 550 lift and one with a 700 lift cam. And it'd be curious to see how much you actually gain. Because I, even though the flow number is the five, they're the same. It'd be interesting to see how much more power this makes because they look the same. Why should it matter? And it'd be a bigger difference. Anyway, that's a little bit of extra knowledge for you. Anyway, guys, sorry for late putting this out. I'm now just finished the video at 8.30 in the morning. I still have to get all this editing done. That's the reason why I wasn't out super early this morning. But anyway, there's the numbers. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'm going to try to do an LS1 or LS3 head on Wednesday, time permitting. You guys take care.